So in this lesson, we're going to talk about scope.watch and some ways you can use it. What is accomplished with scope.watch? Well, primarily you're going to use it when you are expecting a potential change in a part of your model and you want to execute some conditional functionality based on that change, which is a very general description, but you'll see how we're going to use it in a second. What's set up here is very simple. We just have a my data object with a single val attribute of Jake, just a person's name. And then here we're binding an input to it and we are interpolating mydata.val. Let's say we want to do something when the value of mydata.val changes. How do we set that up? Scope.watch is going to set up a watch listener on some aspect of the model. So we need to tell it which part of the model we care about, which here is mydata.val. And then when that change is observed, we want to set a function that's going to execute when it sees a change. So let's go console.log got here. And we see it looks normal. And when we change the value, we see that it's printing got here. So this is working. You may have noticed that it printed got here when we refreshed the page before we changed it. That is an initialization execution of the watch function, and that can be prevented. Let's actually do something with it. So let's say that the input field is a name field and we want to say when the name is too long. How would we do that? Well, let's say the notification that name is too long is a span. Let's say name is too long. So we only want to show this when the name is obviously above some certain length. So we're going to use ng show. And then we'll keep everything within the same objects. We'll just say my data. And then the toggle for whether this is showing or not is going to be the primitive type mydata.toolong. This function is going to execute as we showed before every time it changes. Function is going to get two parameters. The first is the new value and the second is the old value. So if you want to prevent the initialization, the new value and the old value are going to be the same. You would check for equality and then prevent it from happening. That's how you bypass the initialization function. So let's just say new val, since that's really all we need and say scope.mydata.toolong equals newval.length, and then we'll say if it's longer than 15 characters, for example. Recall that since this is being initialized, this is going to initialize the value of too long. Well, let's see if this works. So let's refresh. When we type more characters, we see that when we get to 16 characters, it's triggered. And it's not a one-way trigger, so if we go under 15 characters, it disappears. So this is working. So scope.watch is going to be a very valuable tool in your toolbox going forward because it really starts to make your application dynamic, and it's a very powerful building block that you can use. It's also worth mentioning that it's very easy to degrade performance using scope.watch because if you have a lot of watch dependence, Angular is going to keep trying to equalize everything. So if you have a watcher watching a watcher that's updating data all the time, you're going to have a lot of redundant calculations. So scope.watch, very powerful tool. However, it does require some considerations about making your application efficient.